Hey, what's up? It's me, Angelo, and everybody out there has two cents to offer on their coronavirus take, so here's mine. Uh, I feel a lot of the spectrum of uh, emotions and reactions, not just from others, but from myself, um, going through the phases of acceptance about this thing, what it is, what it could be. And that ties into a deep uh, sense of uncertainty, which uncertainty is a close cousin to fear. Um, it also can be a very close cousin to possibility and new beginnings. So I think keeping in mind that these two things are very closely um, connected is important because we do have a choice, not the choice of how this will encounter us which maybe we do have a little say on that and i'll talk about that in a minute but we do have a say on how we respond and as i've said before and has been said by many great minds before responsibility is the ability to respond so how do we respond to what we are confronted with and what we know now in Oregon, I know there's it's getting close to 70 known cases of the coronavirus that has been um, found out about um, as of today. And I'm sure there's a lot of other ones that have just not been diagnosed yet because we don't have sufficient testing in the United States. Um, and I won't get into the political landscape of that, but it's kind of frightening. So we really have to take responsibility into our own hands as to handling this in a manner that balances both our economic needs, which is essential because this is shutting down a lot of people's livelihoods and ability to stay afloat. But at the same time, it's also our responsibility to do what's best for ourselves and our community because we all are connected and we all are a part of one organism, which is this earth. And right now it appears that this earth is doing some kind of a cleanse. I was talking about fasting and cleansing earlier essential to detoxify and the earth has been put under a lot of stress lately it's been um, trying to respond with earthquakes and fires and floods and polar ice cap melting and the earth is really squeezed right now and we as a part of the earth on its crust on its mantle its cellular level uh, we are being affected because we are the skin of the earth in some ways um, we are the microorganisms when you look at the earth from a greater perspective and each of us um, does individual functions that impacts the earth in a small way but together we impact it in a great way and ultimately we're trying to survive not just for ourselves but for the our families, our larger communities, and for every everyone on the earth, the human the human race. So we're worried right now. This could be terrible. It could take everyone out. We could be the dinosaurs. We're going one at a time, and it's as it's as it's coming. We're afraid, but that's a wrong perspective, I think, because that doesn't necessarily have to be the way it is. And this could roll by and go away. And then in a week or a month from now, we're like, haha, that coronavirus jokes. And right now, it's not really a joke anymore. It's really starting to hit home. And I think as time unrolls, unfurls, we're going to see the magnitude of what this really is because it really hasn't impacted us like it has in China and in the Middle East and in Italy and Spain and other countries that are really getting hit hard with this. And we're seeing the exponential. Um, progression of this virus but there's an opportunity for new beginnings and this is to say that this is presenting itself to us now to a time to be quiet a time to go inward to embrace that yang energy that feminine energy that receptiveness that um that inhalation um, and that reflection on what does this all mean? 
where, who am I outside of all of these things that I surround myself with? Um, we are fortunate enough to have the ability to communicate through technology, through the magical internet, airwaves, phones, digital. You can only imagine how this would have affected the human race had this happened in a different time. Well, maybe I can imagine we've seen other plagues and pandemics happen in the past. But I think right now it's, a, it's an opportunity to not be afraid of the things that we cannot control. The adage from the Alcoholics Anonymous, which is the serenity prayer from the uh, Christian Bible, which I'm not trying to cite any dogma here, but the prayer goes, give me the wisdom to know to, to change the things that I can change, to accept the things that I can't, and to know the difference between the two, or something to that effect. So we know what we cannot change right now. We know what we can change, which is our how we respond to the situation. We can live in a high stress mode. I think all of us feel a little bit of that elevated emotion that's tied to this. But I also think that this is an opportunity for us to learn about ourselves and to learn about our true nature and to be fearless, not foolish. There's a difference between being brave and being stupid. Um, and what we do impacts others. So the other day I was walking through the produce aisle getting us some vegetables because I needed food and a boy walking past me coughed and didn't cover his mouth and immediately I was triggered and I said cover your mouth you know and he's like chill out and I'm like you chill out it's there's a pandemic going on here and then I was like flustered and told you know some people close to me about it and Anyways, he's just a boy. And there's going to be a lot of things that people do that seem stupid to us. Uh, just like in the political landscape, we feel that way about people who are different from us and our political ideologies or our, even in all kinds of belief systems that we have as human beings. But being able to step back, hold space, and just take a breath and think about what we can do to make things better, not just to judge someone else or get what we can get, all the toilet paper rolls that we want for ourselves now. We're really all in this together. And if things were to turn very dark and that could happen very quickly, we'd see the true nature of a lot of people. And it's easy to go dark as a fight or flight function of our frontal lobe of our brain, which is the biggest portion of our brain. Um, it really saves us in times of um, emergency. But I think it's good to adapt yourself, ourselves, to and be prepared, not being prepared for catastrophe, but just being ready for um, being flexible. Don't expect things to be as they were in the past. This is a new time. This is a new dawning. This is a new world that we are now encountering. There's still beautiful sunlight. The trees are still enjoying this. This is an opportunity for us to restore our, our systems of ecology and maybe even spirituality. Again, not in a dogmatic way, but in a way that we can connect with other people and be more compassionate and understanding because we are all going to die someday, whether it's from a pandemic or natural causes or, I mean, all causes are natural. Everything is natural. We are a part of nature and we don't seem to always remember that that we are the creations that we make such as plastic and styrofoam and pollution is all natural it's all a part of nature because we are part of nature 
we also are a part of a collective consciousness or unconsciousness depending on how you look at it and we do have a responsibility to determine the outcome of how things are going to work moving forward so there's going to be dark forces inevitably there always are there always have been but we can choose to be a force for light and we can find peace and quietude resilience and resolve within ourselves some practical things that I've found that have been working for me is just surrendering to rest this is putting us all under a lot of stress just in our minds which affects our bodies which affects our breath our adrenals our nervous systems our circulatory system our heart you know our stomach everything is affected by this and it's largely on a subconscious level more than we understand so it's quite important for us to get plenty of rest and to breathe and to relax and to find things even if they're quite small of gratitude that we can appreciate each day it's really what's going to save us it's not how can I beat my neighbor to the last roll of toilet paper or how can I get that last box of crackers? It's about how can we, while in isolation of sorts, be closer than ever with our fellow human being. And another practical um, implementation in everyday life that for me is doing the breathing doing some exercise you know go outside go for a walk you know you can't live in a you know fallout shelter i mean you can but is that living um be thankful for what we have if you're not in prison or in tight confinement somewhere you're not hungry you're not wanting for basic essentials. Feel grateful. Feel grateful for what you do have. Feel grateful for the people who you love and that love you. And uh, the things that we do have in this life. Because it is still a great life. And it could get harder. And it could get better. It, could just, it just is what it is. Tonight I took a cold shower after a hot shower. Then I went, I've, I've been reading about things to do to strengthen your immune system. I go a minute on as hot as I can take it, and then a minute as cold as I can take it, and go back and forth a few times. And then when I get out, I feel like, okay, that really calmed me down. Once I got out, I felt chill, and I'm, I'm feeling all right. It's also when you eat food, try to eat healthy, whole, organic foods when possible. Don't stress your body by putting junk in it just because you feel emotionally stressed eating out of just to comfort yourself or eating and drinking just to quell some kind of a um, uncomfortability that you feel. Um, and I have to remember that too. Drink plenty of water. Drinking half of your body weight in ounces of water a day. So if you're 140 pounds like me, say drinking at least 70 um, 70 ounces of filtered water every day um, but yeah that's about all I've got for tonight but I've been thinking about this a lot and I really just want everybody to remain calm um, even if you think you are realize that there is a l underlying level of stress that we all are feeling and it's good to just bring ourselves back through some kind of a practice that's relaxing to us, taking your mind away from this as much as possible, but also being smart and being um, conscientious because this is happening for a reason. What We don't know why, but it is happening for a reason. Everything in life happens in some system. I mean, particles and energy move around a nucleus of or a sun or whatever you want to whatever it is it happens systematically so this is some kind of a system that's unfolding whether it's by our creation we're still part of the system we're still part of nature and um 
be a be a positive force, be a proton, um, but also keep that calm um, that calm feminine energy with us, and um, be responsive and kind. Thanks for watching, and um, have a great day. Peace.